What if I told you that one of the most fundamental technologies in your daily life, something you probably don't even think about, is quietly being replaced? It's not flashy. It's not new. In fact, it's been around for more than 25 years. And yet it connects everything. Your phone to your earbuds, your smartwatch to your health app, your laptop to your speaker. It connects your car, your TV, even your fridge if you've got one of those smart ones. You use it every single day, probably without even realizing it. I'm talking about Bluetooth. That little symbol you've tapped a thousand times. The wireless handshake that quietly makes your tech just work. But something strange is happening. A silent shift. Beneath the surface of the consumer tech world, one of the biggest transformations in wireless communication is underway. And almost nobody is talking about it. It's happening slowly, stealthily, through new devices that look just like the old ones, but behave differently. They pair faster. They stay connected longer. Their batteries last days longer than expected. And the most surprising part? These devices aren't really using Bluetooth at all. In the past year, if you've bought a new Xiaomi phone, a smart speaker, or even just a light bulb from their ecosystem, you may have noticed something different. The setup felt easier. Things just worked. Pairing was instant. Your phone recognized your earbuds before you even opened them. You didn't think twice. You just thought, huh, that's nice. But when researchers and analysts started looking into these experiences, they found something unusual. These devices weren't running the Bluetooth protocol. They weren't even pretending to. They were running something entirely new, something faster, more efficient, and eerily seamless. And that new protocol has a name, Nearlink. Now, at first glance, Nearlink might sound like just another marketing term, another feature name slapped on a box. But it's not. It's not just a new version of Bluetooth. It's an entirely different technology, a completely separate wireless protocol with its own infrastructure, its own development path, its own goals. It's a fundamentally new approach to short-range wireless communication. And it's already here, right now in consumer products flying under the radar. What makes this even more fascinating is who's behind it. Everyone assumed Xiaomi had quietly built this as an internal upgrade. After all, they've been investing heavily in smart home tech, wearable devices, and building a cohesive product ecosystem. But here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. Nearlink isn't just Xiaomi's idea. It's actually built on core technology developed by Huawei as part of their Harmony OS platform. That's right. Two of the largest Chinese tech giants, often portrayed as direct competitors, are working together. This changes everything, because what we're witnessing might not just be a company trying to optimize its user experience. We might be watching the beginning of the end for Bluetooth as the global standard. Think about it. Huawei, despite its geopolitical troubles and restrictions in Western markets, has continued to innovate behind the scenes. And while they've had difficulty selling hardware internationally, their software, their protocols, are still spreading. By partnering with Xiaomi, they've found a way to distribute this new wireless standard globally without triggering immediate political backlash. And this new protocol? It's not just better, it's in another league. Early benchmarks suggest that Nearlink offers speeds that are not only faster than Bluetooth 5.0, but approaching Wi-Fi level data transfer rates in some applications. It has dramatically lower latency, especially in gaming and audio use cases, where Bluetooth often struggles. We're talking about near-zero delay, the kind of responsiveness that gamers dream of. And then there's power efficiency. Some early adopters are reporting battery life increases of 30 to 40 percent for devices that are constantly connected. That's not just a tweak. That's revolutionary. But maybe the most impressive part is the intelligence baked into Nearlink's architecture. This isn't just a connection protocol, it's a learning system. Devices connected via Nearlink don't just pair and play, they adapt. They optimize. Over time, they become faster, more efficient, more stable. It's as if the system understands how you use your devices and evolves to serve you better. Bluetooth was designed in the 1990s, long before machine learning and adaptive protocols were even on the radar. Nearlink is built for the modern age, and it shows. What's even more surprising is how quickly other companies are taking notice. In China, Nearlink is already spreading rapidly beyond Xiaomi. Other manufacturers, including lesser-known smart home brands, are adopting the standard. And outside of China, signs are starting to appear. Analysts are seeing subtle shifts in how Western companies are approaching wireless connectivity. Apple's latest AirPods firmware updates. Google's Android 14 changes to device discovery and pairing. Nothing official, nothing confirmed, huh? but there's a clear sense of quiet urgency in the air. 
as if everyone suddenly realizes that Bluetooth may no longer be the unshakable foundation they thought it was. And here's the thing. Bluetooth isn't just a protocol. It's an industry. Companies pay to license it. There are billions of dollars tied up in its ecosystem. Chip manufacturers, accessory makers, car companies, audio brands, they've all built their products around it. So what happens if Nearlink takes off? What happens to all those investments? What happens to your Bluetooth headphones? Your speaker? Your fitness tracker? If your new phone no longer supports Bluetooth, or if it does but with degraded performance, those devices become obsolete overnight. Not because they stopped working, but because the world moved on without them. The environmental implications alone are staggering. Millions of devices tossed aside, not because they're broken, but because they can't keep up. Regulators are starting to pay attention, but it might already be too late. The transition is already happening, just slowly enough to stay under the radar, but fast enough that by the time the industry fully responds, the new standard may already be entrenched. And here's the part that might make some people uneasy. This isn't just about faster speeds or better battery life. This is about control. For decades, Western companies, through organizations like the Bluetooth SIG, have controlled the wireless standards that power our devices. They've dictated how things connect. They've collected the licensing fees. They've owned the protocol. But Nearlink is different. Nearlink is Chinese-born, Chinese-led, and quietly becoming Chinese-exported. It represents a shift, not just in technology, but in global influence. What we're witnessing could be the beginning of a new kind of tech cold war, not one fought with gadgets or social media platforms, but one fought at the protocol level. The base layer, the invisible infrastructure that underpins every smart interaction in our digital lives. If Nearlink becomes the dominant standard, and all signs suggest it could, then the global center of wireless power shifts. And that changes everything. For consumers, this could be a dream. Faster connections, longer battery life, smarter devices, a seamless ecosystem that just works. But for companies built on the Bluetooth economy, it's a nightmare. And for governments already wary of foreign tech influence, it's a major question mark. The most remarkable thing about all this is how silently it's happening. No big announcements, no flashy product keynotes. Just device after device, rolling out into the world, quietly speaking a new wireless language. And most people have no idea. You might be using Nearlink already. You might have experienced it. You might have felt it. That moment your new device paired faster than ever before. That time your headphones lasted way longer than usual. You probably thought it was just a fluke. It wasn't. It was the future, slipping in while Bluetooth wasn't looking.